Astros. On the starting grid after two days of practice, it's an all-Brazilian front row, to the delight of the vast crowd. Senna snatched pole in the Lotus at the last moment. Fellow countryman Nelson Piquet is alongside Senna in second place. And Piquet's Williams teammate Nigel Mansell is third on the grid. The Williams team looking good. René Arnoux is a dramatic fourth in the new Ligier after only racing here in 1985 with Jack Lafitte notoriously disinterested in qualifying and even more surprising fifth in his Ligier ahead of Alboreto's new Ferrari. Then Rosberg, Johansson and Prost with Ricardo Patrese tenth in the new low-line Brabham and Johnny Dumfries a superb eleventh for his first Grand Prix. Martin Brundle is 17th Alan Jones 19th and Palmer 21st and so now we await the start of the Brazilian Grand Prix and the 1986 season and it's go a superb start for Nigel Mansell who has already passed Nelson Piquet everybody else away well so Senna leads away from the start with Mansell in second position, Piquet in third position and one of the McLarens has come up very quickly indeed, almost certainly Keki Rosberg who was seventh on the grid but it's Senna, Mansell, Piquet is the running order at the present moment. Sparks there from Mansell's Williams as he just bottomed over the bumps, remember they've got a completely full fuel load on board at the moment so the cars are very heavy. Driving with the newfound confidence of having won two out of the last three Grand Prix of last season and really charging. And he's having a look down the inside of Ayrton Senna, sparking away. Look at the wall. Oh. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. That, I think I couldn't see what happened to Mansell. I think the same thing has happened to Mansell as happened last year because Mansell went off very early in the race in 1985. Let's have a look. Touching wheels with Ayrton Senna as they go around the left-hander and Mansell certainly spun, so up into second position. It's now Piquet. Mansell appears to be out of the race as we look down on this replay. You see him spin onto the grass, into the armco. You didn't actually see him hit the armco, but he certainly did. So Senna leads, PK second, Alvareto is up into third place, down to fourth is Arnu, fifth is Rosberg, and in sixth position in the second red Ferrari is Johansson and, and through into the lead goes, goes Nelson Piquet. Nelson Piquet leads on lap three, a Brazilian has displaced a Brazilian. Yes, and uh, that was well, very well done by Nelson Piquet, he, got a, he made sure that he didn't get into the situation that Nigel Mansell had got in and he got clean air and got fully, fully past Ayrton Senna. I would think that he's, he was pretty frightened of getting past Senna, but I suspect PK is now going to take the mark of the only part of this race. And there, uh, Cross just moving up a little bit. Alain Prost, let us never lose sight of him. He's already won the Brazilian Grand Prix three times. And although he was only in ninth position on the grid, he was nevertheless fastest in the warm-up, so-called warm-up, the final half hour of practice this morning, when he went round in one minute 33.2 in his second car. Now there's Nigel Mansell in the pits, and I have little doubt that there will be a sharp interview between Nigel Mansell and Ayrton Senna after this race. The uh, left side tyres on Nelson's car, both the front and the rear, and they look to be marking up a bit. But of course, it's a very, very abrasive track. And there's Rosberg into the pit, so Keki Rosberg in, in trouble. And this is lap seven. Out goes Keki Rosberg. Keki Rosberg, the 1982 world champion, retires on lap seven from his first race for the McLaren team. So you saw the difference between Nelson Piquet and Ayrton Senna. And I should tell you that...
Prost now coming up to take the Brabham, the distinctive Brabham of Riccardo Patrese, which was in seventh position. So Prost, as ever, is the danger man. As at last, Pique now just seems to be just starting to open that gap with Senna. After he passed him, Senna was holding on uh, pretty much in the same place for some laps, but now Nelson just seems to be inching away a little bit. There's the Ferrari, which to me looks a very bulky car, and Alan Jones is out of the race. Alan Jones has obviously retired on lap 11. Now look at this, there's Senna second, Alvaretto third, Arnoux in fourth position and right up behind him in fifth place and surely about to take him world champion and three times Brazilian Grand Prix winner Alain Prost again the McLaren is beautifully balanced and has got just the right power for the race yes and I don't think it'll be very long before we see a new fastest lap for Prost because he needs to get past Arnoux before he can do that but as soon as he gets a bit of clear space on the circuit and Prost is through so Prost is up into fourth place and chasing Michele Alboreto. There is Prost, defending world champion of course, starting his defence now. And the McLaren has been very um, true to form in a way in that they don't seem to be able to get a lot of speed up for qualifying. Their engine doesn't turn up to extreme boosts and extreme high power unlike most of the others but uh, come the race the car is extremely well balanced and set up it's been operating beautifully for two years already and uh, although the other teams have done a fair bit of catching up on the chassis this has been the first chance we've seen to have to measure up their relative power because Prost is right in the slipstream Alberto is trying to block him but Prost I think Oh, they're doing a side-by-side -side job. Oh, Prost had to slow down. It was nearly a repeat of the uh, Senna-Mansell incident, but with two more, rather more experienced drivers, uh, everybody emerged on skate. There's the new Ferrari. Very bulky, very much higher rear cowling behind the driver's head than it had last year. And Prost getting set up. Now he's tucked right under the wing of Alboreto's Ferrari. Into the pits. It's one of the Tyrrells, it looked like Martin Brundle into the pits and Prost is going for it. It is Brundle that's gone into the pits and Prost has gone through to take third position. Yes, well that was quite a struggle for Prost. He was perfectly placed on the straight for getting a good toe behind the Ferrari and despite the fact that the Ferrari was making the hole in the air, he, Prost was only able to get alongside and he had to scratch his way past with it. There is Stefan Johansson in for the first of the tower change men. He was in sixth place, and I think we're going to see a lot of people coming in for towers now. Well, here's a sensational development, because with Piquet leading, Senna second, the man you're looking at, Alain Prost, in third position, with down to fourth, Michele Alboreto, still in fifth, René Arnoux, up into sixth place comes Andrea de Cesaris, Andrea de Crasheris, as he used to be known in the McLaren team, and he's certainly pressing on, not only in the new car, but with the Motori Moderni engine in it, and uh, that is a very significant happening. And we look at Nelson Piquet now, back with the leader, lap 18, facing himself round. PK well up now amongst the tail enders to take Philippe Streff in the Data General Tyrrell. New colour scheme for a new sponsor in the Tyrrell team. There is one of the, that's De Cesaris going almost up to the Armco and out of the race. So I spoke a bit too soon in uh, being so laudatory about Andrea De Cesaris. And there goes Bootsum. So the, the tyre changes are fast and furious now, and here is Nelson Piquet, the race leader, coming into the pits for what could be an absolutely critical pit stop. 
And there, incidentally, that was Prost, who's got a lot closer to Senna. So Prost is really flying on the track. There goes Nelson Piquet, spinning his wheels as he goes to get those new tyres warmed up as quickly as possible. And so therefore, Ayrton Senna becomes the leader for the moment. I'm sure he'll be interchanged pretty soon, but he's got Prost catching him fast. And that was a super pit stop as we look now at Michele Alvareto having his boots changed. Just about nine seconds for Nelson Piquet, the race leader, and Alvareto was in fourth position. But here is the battle for the lead on lap 19, Senna. V6 Renault engine, the new one with the pneumatically operated valves, no valve springs. Alain Prost goes over the line to complete 19 laps, 61 lap race. Now this is going to be an interesting uh, challenge for Prost, how to get past Senna. He's clearly quick, there was a little bit of a twitch there from Senna, but no bother, just lost a little bit of time. And there is Andrea de Cesareth walking back. He's uh, parked his car at the end of the main street, so it's not too far from the pits anyway. And Senna twitching again. Now I wonder if his tyres are getting near the end of their life. Other people have been in already, but uh, Prost will be very pleased if Senna goes into the pits, which will save him the bother of having to fight his way past, because I don't think the McLaren is going to be quick enough on the straight to get the tow. He's perfectly placed for the tow down the straight. He's got that nice three car lengths. Let's see if he can slingshot up and he's coming up behind Senna, out of the tow. And he's got enough. I think Prost is going to go through. So Alan Prost takes the lead. And a wheel off. Look at that. Left front wheel completely missing. Elio De Angelis driving a Brabham tricycle. We're on lap 21 now, and Johnny Dumfries in the JPS Lotus in his first Grand Prix is only one place off the leaderboard in seventh position. You look at the new race leader, Alain Prost. Behind him in second place, Ayrton Senna. In third position, Nelson Piquet, who has changed tyres. In fourth position is René Arnoux, and then in fifth place is Jacques Lafitte. So the two Pirelli runners are both on the leaderboard. In sixth position, it's Patrick Tombe in the Beatrice Hart, and in seventh place, as I said, Johnny Dumfries. Senna to the pits. Second position. The pneumatic hammers go on. The wheel nuts are undone. That notice being held out is to remind him to keep the brake on. The mechanics are clear. The wheels are changed. And that was 11.7 seconds, according to my stopwatch. 12.5 according to the organizers there anyway is the race leader and uh, Alain Prost will now be increasing his lead Jonathan Palmer into the pits there looks to me as if Prost is going to try and do the race on just two sets of tires whereas some of the other teams are expecting to have to stop twice and use a third set and quite frankly if he can do that it looks a bit like game set and match barring mechanical problems because he's the only one of the front runners now who hasn't stopped apart I think from Arnu who hasn't yet been in and there uh, is Nelson Piquet coming up laughing one of the Tyrrells and here's a man who, for, for whom a car had to be specially built because this is Gerhard Berger, the Austrian driver who last year drove for Arrows, this year for Benetton. They had to build a special car for him because his feet are so big that they had to make a special front bulkhead to accommodate him. And Nelson Piquet now with 134.24 is really charging because that is nearly a full second faster than Alain Prost's previous lap record. So Piquet is the fastest man on the circuit and he looks as though he's starting to catch Prost. Starting to, he's nearly caught him. The thing is, Piquet, with the advantage of new rubber, is absolutely flying, and it looks like uh, now as if McLaren's tactics of trying to do it on one, uh, or just on one tyre change, may well be wrong. Into the pits, Teo Farby in the Benetton. This is Piquet. You're going to see a change for the lead very shortly. I should think on lap 27, and this is the 26th. 
when Nelson Piquet takes over from Alain Prost, the Williams Honda will lead from the Marlborough McLaren. And I think Prost should go for his tyres now because remember there's less wear in the second half of the race, the track has become softer and you see how Prost is struggling on the, the warm tyres, he was down on the low 1 minute 35 lap time uh, at 10 laps or so ago and he's now slowed right down to uh, over 1 minute 36 so he's going at least a second a lap slower uh, courtesy of the worn out tyres and I think he should go to the pits now and then hope that the second set he puts on will carry him through the rest of the race the track being softer and of course the car being lighter so PK right up behind Prost he's caught it Trombe has stopped and is out of the race in the Beatrice Hart so that's both the cars out Alan, Alan Jones and now Patrick Tornbe. Nelson Piquet catches Alain Prost and goes through to take the lead in the Brazilian Grand Prix to an absolute roar of approval from the best grandstand on lap 27. As this is the replay with Piquet sprinting past Prost and Piquet's now got to build up enough of a lead to enable him to hold that position after Prost has been in to change his tyres and come out on fresh rubber. Nelson Piquet leading. Alain Prost in second position, not having changed his tyres. Ayrton Senna third, having changed his tyres. Fourth is René Arnoux. Fifth is Jacques Lafitte, and that's a terrific performance for the two Ligiers. In back into sixth position goes Stefan Johansson. In seventh place was Patrick Tolbe, so it will now again be Johnny Dumfries. Off goes a Ferrari, whose is it? And it seems to have been Johansson that went off. Prost is in the pits now. This is this is what could make or break the race. It's vital that the McLaren people get him out quickly, and they have done. 9.5 seconds is a very quick pit stop for Alain Prost, lap 30. He's now on his 29th lap as he rejoins. So Alain Prost will certainly be going through, I think, on this set of tyres. Yes, and he's coming out just behind Ayrton Senna. So Prost drops back down to third place with Senna to chase. And that is also the best pit stop uh, that we've seen so far today. I have to say, in general, the standard of uh, tyre changing by the crews has been extremely high in this race. We've seen I think the worst stop has been about 12 and a half seconds, so that's uh, really quite impressive. The teams have obviously been rehearsing hard. And I see a little bit of smoke from the back of Prost's car. I picked up just a little plume of smoke as he came out of that last corner. And he is, yes, I think there may be a little bit of trouble with Prost's car. So Prost is marching on at the moment, but his days look as if they may well be numbered. Well, Senna is now second. Prost is going into the pits, you can't see him, there he is. Now, Alain Prost into the pits. So that means to say that Nelson Piquet here is building up his lead in the Williams Honda. What a wonderful fillip this will be for Frank Williams if Nelson Piquet brings this car home first in his first race for the Williams team. Alain Prost has retired, as has his teammate, Keki Rosberg, I cannot remember when the McLaren team last failed to get one of their two cars home. The world champion, Alain Prost, is not going to make it four Brazilian Grand Prix wins. He won in 1982, he won in 1984, he won in 1985, he led in 1986, but now his race is run and Piquet leads Senna, his countryman, by 25 seconds. In third position, it's Arnoux. Fourth position, it is Lafitte. In fifth position, the English driver, Martin Brundle, in the Tyrrell. And in sixth position, the Scottish driver, Johnny Dumfries, in his first Grand Prix. And there uh, is De Angelis, just exiting the pits, and instead the new Brabham, beautiful looking car but it certainly uh, certainly has started to perform pretty well here which we all hope it will because it would be nice to see Brabham up at the front fighting uh, with the top teams again Brundle in the pits for new tyres this is 
Rennie Arnoux, the man who fell out with commendatory Ferrari last year after this race and was fired. Alain Prost retired, as did his teammate Keke Rosberg, because of engine trouble. And that is a turn up for the book. And that is one of the Ferraris going out sort of mowing or parking. I couldn't see which one it was. So uh, that's Alboreto. And that is Alboreto walk, walking in with Johansson having gone off and stuck in the gravel some laps earlier. But this is one of the teams that is not in trouble from that point of view because Ayrton Senna in second position in the JPS Lotus has got behind him his teammate Johnny Dumfries in fifth position so both the JPS cars are currently on schedule for scoring Constructors Championship points lap 38 Johnny Dumfries coming into the pits now let's hope it's just for tyres he's been running in fifth place it looks like it so he's coming in for his second tyre change they probably called him in early in order to get the work out of the way before Senna comes in and uh, no there seems a problem brushing up tires well they weren't uh, organized for this and here comes nelson pk so they are going for two tire changes as expected and pk coming in for his second set now i've no doubt the williams team will be ready yeah, it's a very bad stop by the lotus team they were completely disorganized uh, apparently not ready so maybe dumfries didn't warn them that he was coming in for tires now this should be a good one. Nelson Piquet, the race leader, it was about 9 seconds last time. That'll do 11.75 seconds. Even uh, Now this is Senna in second position and he might even be taking the lead. There, he has taken the lead. Senna has gone into the lead on the 41st lap because as he passed the pits exit, Keke Ross, uh, Nelson Piquet on his new tyres emerged from the pits and it'll take PK a little while to get the tyres up to race temperature. Senna now leads. PK is in second position. And into the pits now for tyres comes Ayrton Senna, who will lose his lead in the process. In fact, he's probably almost certainly lost it now. Piquet has regained the lead from Senna, who is in the pits for tyres again. Out he goes, just over 12 seconds, a very slick stop. So the positions are restored to the previous situation. Well, there's Bob Dance in the cap, leaning over Johnny Dumfries' car. And it looks as though Dumfries is sadly destined not to finish in the top six. PK leads, Senna second. Still the two Ligiers, a terrific performance of Arnoux and Lafitte third and fourth. In fifth position now, it is Gerhard Berger. Still well up there is Martin Brundle, who will, I think, be coming onto the leaderboard and could well be getting the Tyrrell team its first Constructors' Championship point for 1986 by the end of the race. PK leads. Berger into the pits again, and whilst I understand the uh, desire of our Brazilian producer to concentrate on the home products of PK and Senna in first and second place, I must tell you, and this is going to be no consolation to you, that I wish to goodness he'd have a look at the battle for third, because René Arnoux and Jacques Lafitte, who are the only other two cars on the same lap as the first two, are only about half a second away from each other in third and fourth places, 40 seconds behind the leader. Lap 49 in this 61 lap race, with only 10 cars left in it, 15 out. There is Arnoux, at last we're, and Lafitte, my goodness, he must have heard me. Because at last we're seeing the battle for third position between, in, in the blue and white car and the white helmet, René Arnoux, 37 years old, and his countryman Jacques Lafitte, 42 years old, two of the oldest drivers. Indeed, Jacques Lafitte is the oldest driver in the race and uh, has already 
driven in 167 Grand Prix and he's closing up on Arnoux and showing every sign of wanting to pass him. Now this will be really interesting because Arnoux is not a bloke who is about to move over. Look at Jacques Lafitte going for third position. It's a really most encouraging performance from the Ligier team because uh, they've had a couple of seasons in the doldrums a bit but they really bounced back and it's it's good to see Rene Arnoux back and going well. But I suspect that they don't have any team orders. I'm quite sure that they're going to race each other for the place. And uh, Lafitte will probably be quite careful about how he does any overtaking the movies on René Arnoux because Arnoux is a pretty hard man. Fifth position behind Jacques Lafitte, the second of these two French drivers in their French Ligier cars, is Martin Brundle in the Data General Tyrrell. And not only is Brundle in fifth position, but Philippe Streff, his teammate, is in sixth place. Seventh place, I'm sorry. So it's quite possible that both the Tyrrells are going to finish in the points. Because I wouldn't be at all surprised the way these two Ligiers are going if one of them doesn't disappear from the proceedings. But at the present moment, on lap 51, out of 61, in front, Nelson Piquet. About 15 seconds behind him is Senna, then these two, then Martin Brundle, and then Gerhard Berger, followed by Streff Seppel. It's a pity that we left the Ligier battle just then, because uh, Lafitte looks ideally positioned, and Lafitte has in fact gone past. We've seen it out on the circuit, so as I was just saying, he was ideally placed to get a toe past him on the straight, and he made it. So we left at just the wrong moment, and we rejoin race leader Nelson Piquet. Well, here it is. I was going to say a bit of inspired button pushing, but now we can see it. Watch Jack Lafitte close right up to Rene Arnoux. He's got his car alongside Arnoux. The only way Arnoux could uh, prevent him passing was by pushing him off the circuit. And Rene wouldn't do that to his teammate. So Jacques Lafitte goes up into third position, down to fourth place in his first Grand Prix for 12 months, goes Rene Arnoux. Here is the race leader, Nelson Piquet. Into the pits now comes Teo Farby. One lap to go. Nelson Piquet is doing it. Yes, it all looks well. I think he can just about coast right now. Let's hope that uh, he's got the fuel there. And really, it's been a wonderful drive by Nelson Piquet. He's looked favourite for this race throughout. He's dominated it really from about lap five onwards when he took the lead. And uh, it's the perfect result for Frank Williams. And I have to say, on our own behalf here and on behalf, I hope, of all racing fans, this is a very popular win for Nelson Piquet and it's the best possible get well present that uh, they, the team could be giving to Frank as he lies in hospital. We all wish you very well Frank, I'm sure you're watching for a speedy recovery and uh, how's that for a better bit of medicine than anything they're giving you in hospital and look at that crowd, just going mad for Nelson Piquet. Tremendous result, marvellous drive, a race that was very hard on attrition. Senna uh, was a very disappointing incident on the first lap with Nigel Mansell. We felt that Senna squeezed him very unfairly when Mansell was fully alongside on the inside for the corner, but uh, his teammate Nelson Piquet has made full amends for him, if uh, as far as amends are possible. And here we come, just coming round, two more corners to go for Nelson Piquet before he takes the check flag. This one is for you, Frank. Nelson Piquet wins the 1986 Brazilian Grand Prix and you will hear the crowd go absolutely mad. Piquet wins in the Williams Honda and it's a Brazilian in second place with Ayrton Senna. The great Brazilian Grand Prix for Brazil. Nelson Piquet the winner, Ayrton Senna second. Jacques Lafitte third, René Arnoux fourth, Martin Brundle fifth, Gerhard Berger sixth. The Constructors Championship is led by Williams from Ligier, with JPS Lotus in third position, Tyrrell fourth, and Benetton in fifth place.